All right, that's about all the Mozarts you can hear out of me. Uh, what's up, everybody? Matt Bell with Electric Violin Shop, and we are hanging out today uh, in sunny and warm, really warm, uh, Durham, North Carolina. And I uh, thought we'd invite you guys to, to join us. It's uh, it's nice here. We've got uh, we've got burgers and shakes and all kinds of deliciousness. Um, so as I guess you guys saw from the title on this, how to make your electric violin sound like an acoustic. <laughs> What's up, Nick Hyde? So, uh, yeah, that's what we're doing today. There's actually a couple different ways to do this. What's up, Violin? Um, so, there are, we're, we get this question a lot. What is the most, whoops, what is the most, um, what electric sounds the most like an acoustic? And I really don't even know how to answer that question because uh, it's like, you know, which Telecaster the sounds the most like a, uh, like a Taylor uh, acoustic electric? Uh, well, I mean, they're different instruments with different purposes. However, occasionally, you want your electric to sound like an acoustic, right? Sometimes, um, not always, but occasionally. So, there are some different ways to do this. There are two technologies that, that I mean, so, you can just run your electric violin direct into an amplifier and uh, let's let's hear that. So electric violin just run into an amp. So just sort of a clean sound, that's fine. That's that's acoustic ish, right? It's clean, it's acoustic ish. But if you really want that, that wood, that woody, organic sound, there are a couple of different technologies that we can use to get this. There is one called impulse response technology, and, uh, and there's another one called tone matching. And we're going to talk about two different pieces of gear today that you can use to implement these two technologies. Okay, um, what, you, what you listened to on the intro was tone matching. Tone matching is an EQ trick. They basically take a, a violin recording and then they use a, an EQ analyzer to analyze what frequencies are there in what proportion to the frequencies that are not there and they create this map and it's maybe a 2000 band EQ, okay? It's EQ that we really just, we find all the little peaks and valleys in an acoustic violin sound. What's up, Tara? And um, so, yeah, we're not going to be talking about Zetas today. Sorry, bro. Um, we, um, we've got several live streams on that topic that you can find. Um, but, uh, yeah, not today. We're talking about uh, these, these tone, uh, acoustic tone modelers today. So, the tone matching imagines like a 2,000 band parametric EQ, and then you can apply that EQ to your signal. Now, there are more sophisticated ways to do what this is doing, where it takes your sound and it takes the sound of a, of a particular instrument and it subtracts and adds and all that. That's great in the studio. Live though, basically I just want to sort of apply that, that really finely tuned EQ sound to my electric, okay? So the piece of equipment that I used right here to get that sound, and I don't know if you all can see this or not, but it's the Fishman Aura. This is a fantastic, we love Fishman products. Um, I'm actually playing through a Fishman Loudbox artist right now. Um, but the, uh, the Fishman Aura is a fantastic preamp, even without the tone matching, okay? But you can, and, and this is what it sounds like. I mean. That's just dry sound. There's a teeny bit of reverb on the amp there, um, but that's the Fishman Aura. Now, what they've done is they have modeled, um, I've got 16 different violin or viola uh, images that you can get from Fishman for free from their website. 
I've got 16 of those loaded in here. And let's see, uh, this is uh, number uh, three on the user images. So this is a, uh, a Mati violin with a Sound Deluxe E47 microphone, and it was uh, recorded uh, with a mic put across the room, okay, rather than right up next to the violin. So they were able to get an EQ curve from that, and... <laughs> Now you'll notice it's going to lose some beef on the bottom end because uh, a four-string violin cannot generate those low frequencies, so the, the EQ curve sort of falls apart at that place. But you don't lose it; you just don't get a lot of beef. So, what, and that's at 100% blend. So what I generally do is I will say, well, let's take that and let's let some of this. Actually, that was uh, about halfway. Let's go full. Okay, so that's a full blend. I usually go, you know, maybe 40% with the uh, with the image. That way you still get some of that, that organic woodiness in there, uh, but you also get the beef of this Barbera pickup coming through or whatever pickup you got. So a, uh, a piezo pickup can reproduce down to one hertz. So you get all this bottom endy stuff, which is great. It's way thicker than an acoustic violin is gonna be. Um, and you can sort of blend it in there to whatever ratio you want. <laughs> So that's got a bit more of that acoustic flavor in it. Let's uh, let's pick some different. Let's go back to 100%. Let's just pick a different image, and I'm just going to randomly pick one. So much different sound, right? So that's a Yamaha violin with a uh, Sheps um, mic, and that is a near distance. Um, so that's close mic. How is it possible to be out of tune on a fretted violin? Well, if you have a G string that has gone false, which is exactly what happened here, uh, I just haven't bothered to change that string yet. Um, yeah, if you have a string that goes false and you can play out of tune on one of these violins, I'll prove it. I'll show you, it's easier to show on an octave. The frets on, on the wood violins don't tune you all the way out. It's a, it's basically just, I can just feel them under my fingers and it tells me I'm in the right spot. So if you hear me playing in tune, that's all me, man. If you hear me playing out of tune, it's a false string or something. Certainly wasn't me. Um, no, uh, yes, you can play out of string, uh, out of tune on a fretted violin, uh, but it's really easy to do if you have a string that's gone false. Um, so yeah, I forgot that that string was on here. So anyway, that's neither here nor there. The, um, what I was going to show is the different sound that you get from a different instrument and a different mic. What is this? 
Yes, that is number 11, which means that's a uh, Schmidt violin run through a DPA mic. Okay, so that's a close mic with a DPA. Uh, let's go to a uh, viola body, just because I got more strings than uh, than them little poor little four string boys do. Um, so this is a uh, viola. <laughs> All right, so those are in there. Let's see what happens if you go up to the A string. what you get from some different EQ curves with this Fishman Aura. So the, I've downloaded, there are 16 different violin and mic combinations. There are four viola and mic combinations, and then they've got what they call fiddle, which is, those are all on their website. Okay, those don't come on the Aura, but you can download them, they're free. It takes, it, their software is really easy to use. Um, you can go to the bluegrass section, and then they got the they got some fiddle sounds in here. So that's a, a fiddle sound. Here's a different fiddle sound. Not a fiddle player, sorry, um, but that's that's what I, that's what you get. You hire a long haired dude, you gotta. That's all you get. Um, so those are some of the different fiddle sounds that they got. Okay, so there are four fiddle sounds or five built in, and then sixteen violin sounds you can download. Four viola sounds you can download. Okay, that is the Fishman Aura. Uh, let's talk about the hardware. Um, because that's important too, and we will talk about that with the other pieces of technology. This thing is really nice. It's got a tuner built in. It's got an anti-feedback button, which uh, obviously I don't need on a Viper, but it uh, supposedly works really good. I haven't had a chance to use it live, but all the people I've read say it really works. Um, volume, the blend, so I can blend those fiddle tunes if, if those sounds seem a little... Uh, I think they do sound a little artificial, which is, you know, you kind of expect that, right? You can blend it with your natural pickup sound, which makes them sound a lot more organic to me, okay? There's a compressor built in, highs, mids, lows, and uh, yeah, this thing is sturdy. It's got an effects loop on it. You can run it off a of battery. It's got an XLR output. Um, you've got a USB connection. You've got phase, trim. This is a really nice unit and it's it's sturdy. Fishman knows what they're doing. This ain't their first rodeo, okay? So this little box goes for, drum roll please, uh, 349, okay? So 349 bucks, you get a decent preamp, you get all the uh, EQ modeling and stuff, the, the tone matching. Um, it's nice, it's a, it's a nice little unit. It's got a tuner, it does not have any verb, but you know, verbs are really, a really personal thing so I wouldn't necessarily just want their verb I'd probably want my own okay other tone match devices um, on the fractal let's see what are the uh, what are the fractal units uh, fractal does make um, a number of different axe effects um, they have a tone matching block on the fractal okay we're not a fractal dealer so I can't give any prices on those because I don't know I might have to make one up um, I'll make one up two trillion dollars. You can get a front for that, I promise. Um, also, if you want to do this just in your DAW, in your digital, digital, easy for you to say, digital audio workstation, 
at home. Oh my goodness, that's the third phone call today. Um, popular guy. So, um, if uh, so, you can do that on your DAW on your computer. Um, the Match EQ plugin that comes with Logic does that. It's free. There's an Ozone plugin that does it. There's there's a bunch of um, different plugins that come in your DAWs. Uh, look for like tone matching or EQ learning or one of those. You can probably find some videos on YouTube to teach you how to do that. You can take a reference track. I know this was done for a, a particular artist that I know and I won't name names, but this artist, someone was able to get a hold of a clean recording of this artist playing. It was just them, no backing tracks, no band or anything. And they were able to EQ model his sound. And this is an electric violin, mind you, not an acoustic, with some distortion and all that stuff on it. They modeled this guy's sound, and then they were able to add their instrument in there and play through this model. And it was, when I heard it, it was breathtaking. It was absolutely that guy's sound. And um, so when this person showed the artist, hey, I have captured your sound in a box, the artist was not at all happy about this and said, uh, I'd really rather that you not do that because you captured my sound, sort of my signature sound that, um, wow, um, yeah, do me a favor and don't use that. Um, so it is, it is so close that, that the artists who hear themselves being emulated with this technology go, oh my, that's really good. Um, there is also a piece of hardware called the Tone Dexter, which we do not carry at the moment, although that might change, I don't know. Uh, the Tone Dexter is $399, um, and it is designed to take your acoustic violin and say you've got a mic that you really like and a pickup that you use live, and so you record some stuff where you're playing and both of them are plugged in and it finds the sonic spectrum that the mic creates, it finds the sonic spectrum that the pickup creates, figures out mathematically the difference between them, and you get like this difference engine, and then it applies that difference when you go play live, you have your pickup, and but it applies that difference engine so that it sounds like your mic, even though you're using the pickup. Pretty cool, right? If you wanna see a review of that, you can go to thepickuptest.com, Jacob Shikelli and those guys do a fantastic job over there. Um, so they did a really cool review on that. I don't have one here to test, but it is a, it's basically the same technology as the Fishman Aura. Um, if you would like to have your instrument modeled for the Fishman Aura, you can send them and you got to send them an instrument, which, you know, I'm probably not sending anybody my instrument, but you know, say you've got 20 of them and you're a big star and you want, you want your instrument modeled into the Fishman Aura. You send it to them, they will model it for you and send it back, and then you get the file that you can put into your Aura, and then, uh, you know, bitty bomb, bitty boom, okay? Uh, so there, uh, pickup do I use on my acoustic? Um, I, I have a shot and bridge, but I, for the most, I don't ever play out with my acoustic. It pretty much never leaves my house. Um, so, yeah, and I, I have a Glasser electric that I, if I, acoustic electric, so if I ever do have to play an acoustic electric gig, uh, I'll just take the Glasser. Um, so, uh, let's see. So, yeah, talked about all that stuff. Those are tone matching devices, okay? Tone matching is an EQ thing. It does not have any time component in it. The, the sound that you make and the sound that comes out are all time aligned. And, and that means that it's dry, 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 dry. So let me go no verb on here at all. And you can hear, let's just pick one of these, go full. This is the full mix here. Right, so you hear that's dry. So there's no verb in there. There's no time component. The sound that I make is the sound that comes out. There's no tail, there's no nothing, okay? So. So that is the dry Fishman Aura sound with like fiddle number three. Okay, let's change technologies. I'm gonna mute this amp real quick. 
Let's change technologies. Let's go to impulse response. Impulse response is a different technology. Do not confuse one for the other. Impulse response is not an EQ trick. It's a reverb trick. What they do to generate an impulse response is they take an acoustic violin, let's grab one here, and they hit it. My amp popped at exactly the same time. That's hilarious. Ready? So that sound right there, when you hit an acoustic violin, this is a uh, Wood Violins Concert Standard uh, Concert Deluxe, just because we give credit. So that sound right there, and then we edit out the the part where my knuckles hit it, and that is the response to the impulse. My knuckles being the impulse, and they don't use knuckles. They usually have a, a professional percussionist use what it is that a percussionist uses. You know, probably a ruler from school or something, or maybe they got something more sophisticated than that. So they will actually they actually hit it either on the saddle of the bridge or the tailpiece or something. Anyway, so they hit the instrument. It makes that sound that violins make when you whack them, and um, and they record that sound, and it's about three tenths of a second long, three or four tenths of a second. That file becomes a wave file, and then they put that into a convolver or a convolution engine. And that becomes a custom reverb. You can do the same thing with guitar cabinets. Um, say you've got a uh, you've got a Celestian 210 cabinet, and you uh, you know a guitar player is using a, a modeler like a Helix or a Fractal, and uh, and he wants to model that cabinet, that Celestian 210. They can create an impulse response of that cabinet, and then he has the model of that cabinet. He can run through his amp emulator or you can use an amp head an actual amp head you can take like a a uh i was attached to my body glue it was really painful um no there's a strap here um so um so they take they can take an actual say i want to run my fender basement head but i'm in a small venue and i can't be cranking this selection speaker up until it cracks up the way i want it to I can run my actual Fender basement head into a cabinet simulator that has that impulse response of the cabinet in it, and it sounds just like the cabinet is in the room. Well, we can do that with a room. We can go into a cave, and if you say, hey, I want to I want to sound like I'm singing in this certain cave. Well, they can do that. They take microphones into the cave, and they clap, and you can just, ah, in the cave. The ah, is becomes a wave file, and in that case, it might be two or three seconds long. That file can be applied to your vocal or your violin or your clarinet or whatever you play. And it'll sound just like you were playing in that cave, even if you record it in your studio at home. They can do the same with a violin body or cello body or a guitar body or, a, you know, a, I don't know, you can take a, some pots and pans and hit them together and whatever sound that makes, you can make an impulse response from that sound. So then this is basically a reverb trick, okay? So there is a time component to this. I should unmute this speaker. So you can hear there's a tail to that, okay? That is an impulse response. Um, somehow I hit the wrong button there. Um, I do not know what the blend is on this. This is one that we had set up. Um, but we'll talk about all that in a second. So that is an impulse response from a violin body. Uh, oops, let's pick a couple different ones. I don't even know which ones I've got in here because there's no label. Again, 
that stupid false G string. Sorry, that's really annoying. Um, I should stop playing on that string. But you can get, uh, you can store 10 different impulses in here. Okay, so impulse response technology and um, the tone match technology, both of those can simulate an acoustic instrument with a electric going in. It sounds like an acoustic coming out, okay? So how do I get impulse response if I wanna do that? It's basically a, um, I can use the V sound and I will show you this piece of hardware. We do sell this piece of hardware right here. This is um, $3.99 and it has, um, I think somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 different impulses stored in it. You get in using the software and then you um, and then you can put the 10 that you like the best inside the box that are active all the time. Um, what is somebody asking me? Um, there is no reverb right now on that. That's my point. It is, uh, there was no reverb on that signal at all. That is part of the impulse response. That little three tenths of a second, it, it is, it's a reverb. It's the reverb that sounds like a violin body or cello body. So that's all the reverb. And you might be here in the room too that I'm in right now. Um, so because the phones are about 10 feet away from the, uh, from the Fisherman app, but there's no reverb on that amp right now. Um, so yeah, it makes a huge difference. Um, now I know those aren't blended 100% right now because I can hear that. But if I want to get an impulse response sound, you can buy the V sound and it has 30 or so of those different impulses in it from uh, a bunch of high-end violins, Stradivarius, Guarneris, Tononis, Catenaries, uh, you know, Canary in the Mine, all, all different kinds of ones. So, and then they also have hybrid EQs where they've taken, because it is a sound file, you can manipulate that. So we can take a violin sound file and blend it with a cello sound file. And then if I've got an extended range instrument, then I can play my six or seven string violin through that sound. And I've got a violin sound on the top and I've basically got a cello body sound on the bottom. That's really cool. That is a thing that the tone matching uh, right now does not have unless you sample a cello and then you sample You'd have to create your own EQ curve, basically. But the the uh, the inside the Fishman Aura, they don't have any maps or images for extended range instruments uh, because I've not called Fishman yet and asked them to do that. Um, hopefully soon, because all those extended range people, we're cool. We need some love, okay? So you can actually generate your own IRs, and you can actually generate your own tone matches too. Both of them, they're you want to spend a little time with each one, but you can find IRs floating around out there on the internet. Um, I don't know how easy it is to import your own um, tone uh, profile into the Aura. I'm not sure that can be done. Um, I think it all has to go through them. So if I want an IR device, I can either use the V sound or I can use my iPad, any um, iOS device. There is a free app called the Fiddlicator, and you can find that in the um, in the app store. Find the Fiddlicator, it's free. It has a number of IRs already in it, and you can add your own IRs to it. It has a ton of functionality, believe it or not, for a free app. It's really cool. If you have an interface to be able to run your violin through your iPad and then back out to the world again, um, that app is free and it's really cool. I like it a lot. There is a more radar pedal, M-O-O-E-R, radar, like the guy from the show. Um, that's 148 bucks. You can load IRs into that. It also is a cabinet simulator. Sort of the downside of the more radar pedal is you don't have the ability to blend those. So you either get full on uh, IR sound or no IR sound. Okay, I actually like a blend. I think it sounds more organic. You can use a Helix or a Fractal. Uh, we sell the Helix LT here. They're $10.99. You can get uh, a bunch of IRs and load them into the Helix. Then you don't need any other device. You can do all the blending and EQing and all the compression, whatever else you want to do in the Helix. Um, that's, that thing's the bomb. Again, we don't sell Fractals. 
uh, so I can't give you any prices on those, but you, the Fractal does have the ability to handle impulse responses. Also, in your DAW, just like for the tone matching, in your DAW, you can load into whatever the convolution engine is for your DAW. In Logic, it's called Space Designer. I don't know what it's called in the other ones because I use Logic. But um, in your DAW, it can load IR files and it can use those. It can blend and do everything else, okay? So, the V-Sounds 399, that's an impulse response convolver. Uh, the Fishman Aura is 349, that is a tone matching engine. Um, there are other IR devices, there are other tone match devices, um, but those are the two that we carry, and we actually, we do carry the more radar, and we do carry the Helix uh, LT. So there are a number of options here. There are also some free ones, the Fiddlicator, if you, uh, if you have an interface you want to run on your iOS device, or uh, in your DAW, there's generally either a convolution engine, well, there's generally a convolution engine, there's also usually a tone match device in your DAW, okay? We're going to post some videos, I think. I've got to take these things home. I'm going to generate some audio where I'll play dry signal. And then I will, yeah, thanks for the mash. Yeah, only those of us of a certain age will get the mash reference. Um, I'll play just a dry violin sound in, and then I'll run it through an IR, and I'll run it through a tone match. And you'll be able to hear what those things can do, and, uh, and we will get those up on our uh, platforms as soon as I get you know, an hour to mess with that at my house. So, um, yeah. Nick Schaefer, thanks for coming, buddy. Freebird, that guy. All right. So, um, yeah, and we did, who else do we do shouts out to? We did shout out to the pickup test guys. Um, Mark Wood for making these awesome instruments. Fishman, v -Sun. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let me do this. Let me take this thing off. I did want to talk about hardware. Um, probably my only real, um, I do love what the V sound can do as far as sound. Um, it does sound fantastic. And here is the Aura. So you guys can just get an idea how, of how big these things are. Um, and uh, I'm pretty sure, Jaren, I just said that we we're gonna do that. So um, yes, I am gonna do that as soon as I get time. I'm not at my house right now, but probably, uh, I don't know, this week sometime, maybe. Um, yeah, and we'll post that. So, uh, oh, setting up the V-Sound to a Mac? No. Um, you want to hit up the V-Sound folks for that. They have all that documentation. Um, I don't do, like, software demos. That ain't my thing. You, you don't want to watch me use software. It's embarrassing for both of us. Um, so, um, if you go to the vsound.eu, um, there should be documentation for that. Um, I will say the Fishman Aura, far superior piece of gear. Um, from a physical standpoint, um, I like the uh, I like the V sound for the sounds I can get out of it. The Aura also has some fantastic sound. I personally probably would lean a little heavier on IRs than tone matching. Um, although uh, I would probably, if if my fractal starts being able to do tone matching, I will probably start experimenting with running them in series, and we'll just see what comes out of that. Um, but yeah, I would say. I can do pretty much everything I want to do with this piece of gear with this piece of gear. The only thing I have to hook it up to software for is to load the profiles. And, um, and that's it, okay? This piece of gear, they have a brilliant product on the inside. The, the, uh, the circuitry is, is brilliant, fantastic, it sounds great. Uh, the, the, the physical piece of this, it's a lot lighter, so that's nice. But um, I can't blend anything from the outside. I have to do all that in the software, which maybe isn't my favorite feature. And um, yeah, we haven't really quite nailed down exactly um, how these buttons and knobs and stuff should be configured. It was their first, uh, it was really their first sort of effort at making a roadworthy piece of gear. Uh, I mean, the sound's fantastic. If you can live with some features that you're not 100% excited about, um, it really does sound great. You, you, you pretty much have to dial it in at home and then kind of turn it on and turn it off. That's that's what I would do with this thing live. Um, but the, the the real property here is the are the IRs that are in here, and they are stored in here in a proprietary format because it took them a lot of money to develop those IRs and they're not just going to give them away, right? Because it's just a, it's just a wave file 
and you know one person could buy this and steal the wave files out of it and sell it and then you know give those wave files away and then like hey who would need this and then the company that devised all that be out of business right so they've got to sell the box the wave files are locked in there in a proprietary format that only this box can read you know you kind of understand why they do that um Again, I think I think the design of these is going to improve over the next year, um, as they sort of sell the ones that they've got, and then you know making any sort of changes is a fairly expensive thing. Um, I, I think it's going to happen, but probably not in the next year. So, um, yeah, the hardware is kind of suboptimal on these, but the way they work is fantastic. Um, if you guys have any questions, you can dump them in the comments section. And we will get to those as soon as we can on the YouTube side. Hey, by the way, we're on YouTube and Facebook at the same time, which I think is really cool. Uh, YouTubers, hey. Facebookers, hey. Um, also, be sure to follow us on Instagram. If you don't, we just crossed uh, the 20,000 follower threshold, which is awesome for a little, like, six-person operation in Durham, North Carolina. We're pretty, pretty proud of that. And... Um, yeah, where did I get my Evolution t-shirt? Um, my wife made it. She has one of the little machines that can make t-shirt things. So I got one. Um, so, yeah. What is the toughest physical IR device? Uh, the Helix. Um, the Helix, um, the HX Stomp, and then there's an HX Effects. Both of those are $6.99 or $5.99, one of those. Um, the, the Helix LT is $10.99, and you can run as many blocks as you want in that. The Stomp, I think you can only run six blocks in that, uh, but it has all the amp modeling, which is what I need. And then the Helix HX FX. I don't know how many blocks you can run in those, but I know they can run um, IRs. It does not have any amp modeling in it. So it could, I think it can probably run more blocks, which is the trade-off, right? Um, yeah, but like physically, the tough, I don't know, or a more radar. Those things are pretty tough. Um, a lot of people are using them. So uh, to me, I just don't like the fact that you can't blend um, in the more. So, yeah. If you guys have any more questions, I'm going to sign off here in a minute, but if you guys have any more questions, you can dump those in the comments section and we'll answer those. You can always email us, info at electricviolinshop.com, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. You guys know the drill. We're available on all those. And, uh, oh, I do have another announcement. Yeah. So Jeff Stratton, the guy that makes uh, these... He is coming to the shop. In fact, he's coming to my house. He's staying at my house and drinking my beer. How do you like that? Um, he is uh, He's going to be at this shop right here on October 9th, I think. It's whatever that Wednesday is. Uh, the second Wednesday in October. He's going to be here. We're going to do a live stream with him. We're going to talk about his instruments. We're going to talk about uh, his choice in uh, wines or whatever you guys want to know about. Um Jeff Stratton's going to be here, and we will do a live stream with him, and we're going to hang out and uh, chat. It's going to be fun. So if you guys are in the area and you want to meet, like, this guy, he's an American, but he lives in Bulgaria and uh, makes really, really cool violins. If you want to meet him, he'll be here pretty much all week. So uh, of that, like, the first full week in October, I think. So maybe, I don't know. What, like the 8th through the 15th, whatever that is. He's going to be here. So... Come by the shop and meet him, tune in, whatever. Um, that's going to be awesome. So, hey, thanks everybody for tuning in, and I will see you guys next week. Boom.